Hi, today I'd like you to imagine that I've created a course that has these course objectives, and these are the thinking verbs that go in the course objectives, and I've aligned these objectives with these summative assessments. Summative assessments are the comprehensive and cumulative assessments that we give students, like exams and projects and papers. I'd also like you to imagine that my students are walking along a path, and this path goes from the outcomes to the assessments. And at the end of the path, each of these assessments is a gate. And the gate is locked. My goal as the instructor is to make sure that the students are staying on this path and that they can unlock the gate at the end of the course using these assessments. So how do I make sure that my students are actually staying on the path? And how do I make sure that they have the keys they need to unlock this gate? This is where something called formative assessment comes into play. So summative assessment is comprehensive, and formative assessment are the things that we do as instructors that check in with our students to make sure that they are on the path. They are usually very low stakes or no stakes kinds of assessments, and unlike summative assessments, which are very high stakes. So formative assessments, we can imagine them as keys. And these keys are keys that you create as an instructor that the students use to unlock the gate. So we're going to create some formative assessments that link the course objectives to the summative assessments and help the students stay on the path that leads from one to the other. So let's try the first set of course objectives. The keys that we need to create should be keys that have something to do with this summative assessment over here. So we know that the students are going to be taking two midterms. Uh, they will have multiple choice and short answer questions on them. One midterm will be in week three and one midterm will be in week six. So I want to prepare my students to be able to take these midterms and give them the keys. So I'm going to do a few different things as formative assessments. I'm going to make one key for them that are weekly online quizzes. And these online quizzes will be pretty short, maybe two or three or five questions. They'll be worth very few points, and it's mostly just for students to stay on track with their reading and uh, the other course concepts that we're dealing with. I may also do another key, which is eye clicker questions in class. And those also will be worth just a few points. So here in my weekly, I'm going to do this every week up until week six. For the second assessment, the poster and the visual that the students are going to be doing in pairs and triads, these will compare and contrast different course topics. So what I'd like to do is just make sure that the students have a balanced workload between their paired work and their triad work, and that they're just not doing the poster at the last minute. So my formative assessment for these ones, I'm going to have them in week seven. The key for this one will be that they need to turn in a draft sketch of their poster or their visual. Um, with some draft content also, as well as a workload balance sheet where they tell me who's doing what on the project. For the third summative assessment, which is a thousand word paper, that's going to be done individually. And again, I just, I want to make sure that the students aren't doing this at the last minute, but I also want to make sure that they have a pretty good argument and that they have some evidence to back that up ahead of time. So what I'll do is I'm going to create two keys here. One I'm calling week nine prime, and then I'm going to have one at the end of week nine as well, because this is due in week 10. So week nine prime is going to be uh, giving, submitting a draft thesis statement and just a set of bullet points of the kind of evidence that they're going to use. So I'll say three bullet points. And this is something that I can grade pretty fast, and it also helps me 
check on the students who really need help and be able to follow up with them at the very beginning of the project instead of having them turn in something that isn't good. The second key I'm going to give to these students is for them to turn in a draft outline and a list of references. So I'll have them turn that in at the end of week nine so that they've got all of week 10 to write the rest of their paper. Now what I can do that I've got all of this lined up is I can relook at my grading scheme and make sure that the formative assessments are low stakes and that they count for some points because students don't do anything unless there's points involved with it. And I can make sure that the summative assessments are all ready to go with their point structure as well.